Welcome to the book of First Samuel. Samuel, who we'll find out through this book in chapter 9, verse 9, was called a prophet, but it says that originally before that, it was he, uh, they were called ones seeing, vlepon, uh, ovlepon, uh, the seer, I think in the King James, and they were called, uh, then, he, they, then they changed it to call him uh, a prophet. Uh, Samuel's mentioned uh, three, uh, a couple of three places in the New Testament. It says in Acts 3.24, where Peter was in the temple after healing the lame man, he says, and indeed all the prophets from Samuel and the ones in order, as many as spoke, also announced these days, the days of Christ. And then when uh, and Paul was in Antioch of Pisidia. He says, and after these things, about 450 years, he gave judges until Samuel the prophet. And then Samuel is mentioned in the uh, Believer's Hall of Fame in Hebrews 11.32. It begins with Samuel's birth. And there was a one man, Anthropos, from out of Aramathaim, Zophim, from out of Mount Ephraim, which is east of Jerusalem, uh, and the tribe of Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, son of Eroam, son of Eliu, son of Thoke, son of Zoph, from out of Mount Ephraim, and it mentions uh, in First uh, Chronicles six thirteen to fifteen uh, that he was of the tribe of Kohath. So he was a Levite that was living among the Ephraimites in Mount Ephraim. And then in next chapter two eighteen, uh, it shows how Samuel was officiating in the temple, or the, not the temple, the tabernacle at that time, the tent. And to this one, Elkanah, was Dio Ginecus, duo, two wives. He's a bigamist. Uh, polygamy was going on, and he had two wives. The name to the one was, in the Greek, Anna. In the King James called her Hannah, and I called her Hannah in the English because I went along with the... Uh, the um, agreed upon names of the King James. And the name to the second was Fenana, Penena in English. And there was to Fenana a child. And to Ani, and this is in the dative, so the change is the spelling, uh, there was not a child. So she didn't have um, a, a child much like other women that are in the Bible that didn't have a child. Sarah, and then when she was older, had one, and Hannah didn't have one. Now, we'll see here where uh, the po problem with polygamy is one of the problems between the women, and not so much the man. In verse 3, it continues, And that man ascended from days to days from out of his city, from out of Aramathame, to do obeisance and to sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh, which was, I believe, north of Jerusalem. Uh, and there was Eli, Eli in the English, and his two sons, Ophni and Phineas, Ophni and Phineas, priests of the Lord. It mentions uh, that Eli was a judge in uh, chapter 4, 18, uh, 18 uh, for 40 years. He was a judge, so he was the last judge. And it came to pass a day, and Elkanah sacrificed. 
And he gave to Penana, his wife, and to all her sons, and to her daughters, portions. And to Hannah, he gave one portion, for there was not a child to her, except that Elkanah loved Hannah above Penanan. So there we see one of the problems of polygamy. You have the man loving one woman above uh, the other. Um, now, and there's a, a problem with starting with we see with um, Abraham with loving Sarah, and then he had Hagar and the problems between these women. Although I'm not sure if Hagar is considered his wife, but there was he was a basically had children with both of them. So to me, I would call him a wife. And then later, Jacob, uh, who went uh, fleeing uh, from his brother, ended up wanting Rachel and had to take the sister also, Leah, but he loved Rachel more than Leah. The problems arose with this polygamy with these women and so forth that the laws of inheritance were given that would protect the offspring of the one that was unloved, if it was the firstborn, even though the man may not have loved the firstborn because he didn't love that woman. But uh, the second uh, born, uh, the firstborn would would, uh, would get the rights of, of inheritance. So there was problems with polygamy. I'm sure there are other ones if we study the Bible and just study that one subject, but I didn't go that far into it. But the Lord locked the matter concerning her womb, that is um, uh, Hannah. And her rival, uh, Penana, provoked her to anger, even indeed a provocation to anger because of the treating her with contempt. For the Lord closed up the matters concerning her womb to not give to her a child. Uh, Now, Rachel treated, uh, not Rachel, Sarah treated Hagar terribly uh, because Hagar had the child and Sarah didn't. And so thus uh, she did year by year in her ascending. So now it kind of almost could be a break here, a paragraph break of some sort. So now, thus, this is what she did year by year in her ascending into the house of the Lord in Shiloh. She was depressed, and she wept and did not eat. And Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Anna, uh, what is it to you that you weep? And why do you not eat? And why does your heart beat you? Am I not good to you? Over ten children? Well, so much for the tact of the husbands, uh, and probably made her cry more. And uh, Hannah rose up after her eating in Shiloh and after drinking, probably very depressed. And Eli the priest sat upon the chair at the doorposts of the temple of the Lord. And she, Hannah, was in severe pain of soul. So she leaves and she goes there and she prayed to the Lord with weeping and she wept. And she vowed a vow saying, O Lord of hosts, if looking upon, if looking, you should look upon the humiliation of your bond woman and should remember me and should not forget your bond woman and should give to your bondwoman seed of a male, then I will put him before you, dedicated until the day of his death, and an iron razor shall not ascend upon his head. So therefore a Nazarite. Uh, And um, so she makes this vow to herself, but the vow is not really completed yet. We'll find out a little bit later how it is completed. And so she makes this vow to give the child to the Lord. And it came to pass, now, this dedicating the child, uh, the church I went to when I came back to the Lord after a 13-year hiatus, the man, the pastor, he was dedicated from the day of his birth because of a problem in uh, birth birthing children at the time, and, and he was, that was back in the 20s or so, maybe, 1920s, and uh, so 
he was dedicated by his mother, and uh, his dedication was certainly um, acted upon even by him as Samuel and telling people and uh, starting a, a movement of the Jesus movement of the 60s and 70s and on down to even today. Uh, and it came to pass when she multiplied praying before the Lord over and over again, Lord, 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 that Eli, the priest, watched her mouth. And she spoke in her cardia heart, cardiac is a derivative, and her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. So he sees this woman probably bent over and crying and lips were moving but couldn't hear anything. And Eli considered her to be intoxicated, drunk. And Eli said unto her, oh, Until when or how long shall you be intoxicated? Remove your wine. And Hannah answered and said, No, O master, I am a woman with a hard day, and a wine and strong drink I have not drunk, and I pour out my soul before the Lord. You should not grant your bondwoman for a mischievous daughter, for from out of the amount of my meditation and from the amount of my depression I have been stretched out until the present. She was hurting, hurting bad, and Eli had got it wrong. But then after she poured it out to Eli, he said, Eli answered and said to her, go in peace. The God of Israel will give to you all your requests which you asked of him. Now, how he knew God put it on his heart to say this to her, I would suppose, And she said, well, your bondwoman found favor in your eyes. Oh, wonderful. And the woman went her way and ate with her husband and drank, and her face was not downcast any longer. And they rose early in the morning, and they did obeisance to the Lord on the ground and went their way. And Elkanah entered unto his house in Aramathaim, or Rama, where Samuel will later go main place for his ministry. And he knew Hannah, his wife, and had uh, relations. And the Lord remembered her and she conceived. So the Lord allows her to have the child. Answer to prayer. So uh, don't give up. Uh, Praying to God over and over again is what we're to do, Jesus says, uh, and then other places of prayers of people um, work greatly with God. So we're not to give up, pray constantly for whatever we need or we're hurting to have uh, the pain taken away and so forth. I have a a bad left hip. I walk with a cane. It hurts. And I pray to the Lord about it every day, but it has never left. But I look at Uh, the book of Genesis, where um, Jacob was going back to Israel, where Esau was, and he ended up uh, going to sleep and wrestled all night with God, the Lord. And then the Lord touched his hip, and it says that from then on he walked with a cane. And the Jews don't eat uh, the nerve on that uh, leg. I'm not sure if it's the left one or not. So puts me in the same predicament, I suppose, that uh, uh, that Jacob uh, was in. And so if a Jacob can get through it, so I imagine I can too. The Lord allowed it to happen. Allows things to happen to a lot of us. And even if we do pray, it doesn't always mean that he's going to take it away either. So She said, and it came to pass in the time of the days that Hannah bore a son, that she called his name Samuel, saying that from the Lord Almighty I asked him. And in the Hebrew that has that meaning. She asked from the Lord Almighty, Pantakratoros. And the man Elkanah ascended in all his house, to sacrifice in Shiloh, as they did before, for the sacrifice of the days and his vow. So he was had vows. People were vowing. They don't do that anymore. And Hannah 
ascended not with him. For she said to her husband, until, um, but I put the I will wait, until the ascending of the boy, whenever I should have weaned it, and he shall appear in front of the Lord, and shall settle there into the eon. So after he's weaned, then she'll take him. And Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Will you do the good thing in your eyes? Sit until when, whenever you should wean it. Only may the Lord establish the thing coming forth from out of your mouth. So right here, he's agreeing to her vow. If the husband didn't agree with it, then the vow did not stand. It's the way it was set up. The law was set up. But here he gives it the pris permission. And so now uh, it is the vow, which she said is going to happen, and the child will be given to the Lord. And the woman sat and nursed her son until whenever she weaned him. Now, how long weaning takes place, uh, it's hard to say. Um, I have my father-in-law. Here, here I got some <clears throat> something in my throat. A nutmeg, when I was drank, I put it on top of my hot chocolate. But So my father-in-law said when he was a young kid that he and other, a couple of other f- friends had a, another friend who was apparently... Uh, nursing until he was almost into his teens, and they called him Tit Wilson. And so some women, I suppose, can wean for a long time. But I think we see here uh, what happens, it says in the next verse, and she ascended with him unto Shiloh with a calf, being three years old. Now, I was wondering, well now, (coughs) excuse me, who's three years old, the calf or the boy? I looked and I couldn't find anything in particular with a calf having to be three years old uh, with with this uh, uh, dedication. So I think it's three years old for the boy, and that would probably be after he was normally weaned, which we would consider today, although these people there, and maybe they weaned, weaned them longer, I don't know. And she went back to Shiloh with this calf, and an epoph, oh, I should have just, oh, well, jumped it up there. And a fine flower and a skin flask of wine. And she entered into the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And it was a, basically a tent. And the boy with them. So he was a considered a boy. Now, three years old, I don't know if you consider a three-year-old a boy. Um, pretty young. And they led him before the Lord, and they slew the calf. And Hannah, the mother of the boy, brought it to Eli. And she said, "Uh, By me, O master, your soul should live. A blessing on the the master, on this, like a priest. Well, he was a priest. I am the woman standing before you uh, with you while praying to the Lord. Over this boy I prayed, and the Lord gave to me my request, which I asked from him, and I lend him to the Lord all the days which he should live for use by the Lord. So Samuel is given over, a young child, I would say, unless that three year was a calf and he was older, and he is given over to Eli's um, care in the tabernacle. Next chapter, we'll find out what happens uh, in Samuel's early life. Very, very interesting chapter, I think. Hope you'll join us, not miss it. Till then, God bless.